Yo, good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? This is your coach, Coach Renz, and today we're going to talk about how you have to use language in order for you to truly start thinking so that you can understand things and you can then have wisdom. I was recognizing in a lot of the comments throughout this week that people were making comments in my uh, on different videos that lack wisdom, that lacked understanding, that lack knowledge. I was at an event last night, and at that event, some comments were made that lack wisdom, that lack understanding, that lack knowledge. So today I want to give you guys uh, some information, and it's going to be based on Noah's art. But it's easy for you to understand wisdom, knowledge, and and uh, and have understanding if you actually think through this. Now, many people today, this today is Sunday. Many people today are going to sit in a congregation. They're going to listen. But they're not going to think. They're not going to say, does this make sense? They're not going to say, what does the evidence show? They're just going to listen, take it in, and let that become their rhetoric, which just leads to, to, to ignorance when you do it that way. So we're going to talk about Noah's flood. Not so much about, was it real? Did it happen? Did it not happen? We all have, people have different ideas and opinions on that. We're going to talk about the fact of was it local or was it worldwide? And a little bit about whether it really was it not. Because here's the thing about it. There are so many cultures pre-Noah, po during Noah, post-Noah that all had deluge stories, flood stories. You had the Sumerians in their Sumerian creation. We know that we have the flood story with uh, Inki telling Zuasutra, his son, that this flood is going to come and that he needs to build this boat, take the seed, he used the term seed, take the seed of every animal and plant life and take it onto your boat. And, and the, the flood lasted just six days, but you know, it killed every all the humans who did not have Anunnaki blood. I talked about that in a previous video. So when we talked about the Nephilim and why there were still Nephilim after Noah's flood. And that alone should let you know that the biblical version, the Christian biblical version of Noah's flood leaves a lot to be desired and has holes in it. And I'm going to give you the biggest issue with that one in a little bit. But the fact that there were post Nephilim, either the Nephilim came from Noah line or it didn't kill everybody. It wasn't worldwide. And according to the Sumerian story, it wasn't worldwide. In the Mesopotamian story, who came, this is really the Babylonians, you had the Epic of Gilgamesh. El Gilgamesh three quarters Anunnaki, Gilgamesh survives a flood. Go boat, do the whole deal. Um, you have Greek flood myths. You got medieval Irish, Welsh, and Norse flood myths. You got Finnish flood myths. In Africa, you got multiple, from the Yorubas to the Maasai, different flood stories within them. In China, you got uh, multiple flood stories from the Chinese, whose culture has been around for 10, 10 to 15 thousands of years. They didn't die during the flood, um, this Noah's flood story. In India, you had the story of Manu, uh, and I can't not, I, sorry, we had a little, we had a little interruption there, but uh, so in India, you had Manu and you had, um, I can't say her name, but she's like the Lord Vishnu reincarnate, but they have a flood story in India, basically is the point of building, getting on the boat, two people, you know, they um, surviving, this deluge, this destruction because the gods were mad. Korea has a, you know, flood story. Malaysia, the Philippines have their own flood story as well, where, you know, uh, the great spirit want to kill everybody. Um, the Polynesians, they have multiple flood stories. In North America, multiple um, Native American tribes have flood stories. The Mesoamerican has a flood story. In South America with the Incas and uh, many other South American tribes and cultures have flood stories. So many of them have flood stories. And of course, some people are going to say that the evidence of others having flood stories is positive proof that there was a worldwide flood story, except for the fact that these flood stories are not all succinct. They don't all happen at the same time. They happen at different times. They happen in different times of history, different periods of history. And so trying to say that because everyone has a flood story doesn't necessarily mean that there was a worldwide flood. Let me tell you a couple of reasons why a worldwide flood would never, 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 never work. And then we're going to go into how understanding grammar destroys the idea of a worldwide story if you're reading it from the Christian Bible. 
now and why every flood story is a localized flood story when you understand the facts. And that is the point. I'm not trying to destroy anyone's religion, not trying to take away anyone's religion, not trying to bash anyone's religion. It's about understanding facts so that you can come to, to, to accurate thinking which won't allow you to sit in an environment where you only take in and believe something because of the fear that they're trying to impose in your life. So let's look at a few things that kind of negate the idea of a flood story that was worldwide. All right, so I mean, I'm just looking at some notes here just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. The first thing that we ought to look at is the receding of the waters. The flood supposedly 40 days, 40 nights, it rained, poured. Now, you have to understand these storms had to be immense, massive. This, this is not your regular little thunderstorm. These have to be like hurricane-like storms, like Katrina-like storms in order to, you know, cover the world with water in 40 days, okay? So, um, if we look, and if you, you know, you talk to a meteorologist, you'll find out that it would take a global flood. So, the whole earth is covered with rain, all right, with clouds. It's gonna drop the global temperature drastically. So now the water receding. Where does this water recede? Once the the the, the rain is over, it said it took about 170 days, 170, 176 days, something like that, for the water to recede enough that you the mountaintops appear. We're gonna get into mountaintops in just a second. So where did all that water go? Did it pour into the earth? I mean, the earth is saturated. Is it draining deeper into the earth? Is it evaporating into the sky, into the sky, and thereby start to create more clouds and get back to a normal weather pattern? It would take a hundred years or more to evaporate or drain off all the water that it would take to cover the planet. Right, a hundred years, not a hundred and seventy days, a hundred years. It would take hundreds of years, a hundred years plus, in order for this amount of water to to leave the Earth to leave and so that the ground then appears. So the idea that after, you know, 70 days, 76 days, 100 something days, all the water receded and uh, everything was back to normal, no, it's not gonna work. Scientifically, that doesn't work. You know, nature doesn't allow that to happen. And since it's believed that the creator did all of this, then nature is what was used. Nature won't allow for that type of recession of the waters. Now, let's talk about the plants and the trees surviving in a world that is now covered with a mixture of salt and, and fresh water. All right. These plants and trees could not have lit, survived. Remember, it took over a year. This was, It took over a year for all the water to receive. I said 70 something days, but it took over a year for all the water to receive. The, all the plants on the planet, all the trees on the planet cannot live completely submerged for a year, for over a year. They would all die. So even though if you say, okay, well Noah had these animals on the, on the boat and everything and the ones that ate grain and the ones that ate other animals, once they're released off the boat, they're released into a barren land that has no vegetation whatsoever to support these animals. Remember, an elephant needs like 44 grains, you know, pounds of, of grain and grass or whatever to live a day. Uh, 44 pounds. Where's it gonna get it? Everything is dead. Plus, um, all that mixture of water, salt water and seawater, that would kill every animal, every sea animal as well. So there would be no plant life, no sea life. And probably all the plankton on the planet would be dead. So oxygen levels would drop drastically. Um, because plankton supply about, I think about like 60% of the oxygen on the planet. Yeah, so that would cause like all kinds of problems as well. All right, so we also got animals all over the planet. How did they survive? How did the animals that lived in, on land, the sloths, you know, how did they survive? How did, um, where, where, where did all the insects go? Where did all the, what, did, did he collect two, two um, gnats? Male and female, two flies? Did, did he collect all of those as well? Where, where's all the insects? Where's the ants? Where's the termites? Where's the grasshoppers? You know, did he collect those as well? Because they, they would have died as well. So we wouldn't have those animals either. And if you are a creationist, then you can't talk about evolution. So, and then that's not enough time to have evolution anyway. Um, from now to, from, because grasshoppers were viable by the time you get to Moses, right? Wait a minute, am I putting that in the right timeline? Yeah. 
by the time you get to Moses. So, um, yeah, you can't have it. Yeah, because that's in Genesis. So, in a few hundred years, you got grasshoppers and locusts and frogs and all these other animals, and they're all over the planet. But I told you there were civilizations um, that all have their own flood stories, and this is local. All right. So, um, another part. There were, archaeologists have shown that there have been civilizations that were around before, after, and during the flood. The M Minoan civilization was around before, after, and during the flood. The Chinese civilization before, after, during the flood. The Mesoamericans before, after, during the flood. The Egyptians before, after, during the flood. These civilizations existed before the flood, during the flood, and after the flood. So therefore, it could not have been a worldwide flood that wiped out all these cultures because these people were already there, which negates the whole idea of all of a sudden, the children of Noah became the, you know, Ham went down and created the Egyptians and North Africans and all that. And um, the other one went up to the Caucasus Mountains and, uh, you know, it, it just negates all of that because maybe the tribes went and they joined in with the people who were already there in those other places because those civilizations still existed. The Egyptian civilization has a history that is at least 13,000 years old, at least minimal, 13,000 years old, and there is no break. The king's list, there is no break, you know? So these, they existed consistently, continuously. The Babylonian king's list existed. So there is no break. The uh, Shu king kingdom, the Shu dynasty in China was around during the flood and there is no break where it ended and then, you know, whoever the descendants of Noah came and reestablished the Chinese culture. It, no, it, it doesn't have it. Plus um, DNA geneticists have shown that the Chinese people came from um, East Africa, so, no. Um, now, the other aspects, uh, let's look at one part that, to me, just gets rid of the whole thing being worldwide. According to the Noah story, the it covered the whole earth. No mountaintops could be seen. The tallest mountain on the planet is Mount Everest. If you ever seen a movie called Mount Everest, you would have known, you would see that you get up to the, that level of elevation, can't breathe. Animals like elephants who are not covered in fur would have died. Hippopotamus, dead. Alligators, crocodiles, dead. Even some of the animals covered in fur. fur. Lions, dead. Tigers, dead. Um, panthers, jaguars, dead. Most of your sheep that were around in that area where Noah was, dead. Can't live in that environment, too cold. Nature has a way of providing the perfect animals for every ecosystem. So, you change the ecosystem of an animal that drastically in 40 days, they're dead. Just no way they could survive. Noah and his family couldn't survive. Even if he was able to have a furnace system that pumped heat throughout the ark, at that high elevation, there's not enough air to maintain a furnace strong enough to pump heat throughout the entire boat on a continuous basis. It has to be continuous, you know, pumping that because you know, three, four hours without that level of heat, everything on the boat dies, all right? And so, Mount Everest. Now it says that it was up there for, and it was like 76 days or something like that before you could see the top of Mount Ararat, which is much, much lower in elevation than Everest. So, it's not high enough. I mean, they, they, if they went that high, everybody would have died. So, there'd be no people on the planet if the Noah story was a literal story. Okay, so no, it doesn't work. Um, another thing, fish life. If I will say all the fish life would have died because of mingling of the salt water and the cold water, but let's look at that a little bit more, a little deeper. And let's look at the fact that we were talking about the elevation, right? In that level of elevation, then you have to realize that um, the, the, it's no more rain. That rain becomes snow and ice. That water becomes ice. So you're not floating. So it wouldn't have been okay, it's all there, you know, it, they wouldn't have been floating, they would have been stuck in ice and they would have to wait for the ice to crack and then for, you know, the then the evaporation would occur. But there's, I think something as important as ice would have been a part of the story if they were stuck and they're not floating around. But according to the story, they're just floating. So where's the ice? And in the polar caps, then that would have initially started out as 
as ice. It would have never been rain, it would have been just ice and blizzards, and that ice would have increased the ice shelf, and that, and as the water rises, it would have, and there's, remember there's cloud cover, so the temperature of the whole planet's down, and that would have created a dualistic top and bottom ice age that would have covered like two thirds of the earth. So two thirds of the earth would have been iced over, covered, and, and there's no evidence of that, none that that was happening at that time frame. So 4,000 years ago, there's no um, ice age that's happening that's covering all of that. Uh, so, no, not going for it. Doesn't work, doesn't work at all. And we've already covered in another video how the Nephilim was still around after Noah and supposedly this was supposed to get rid of them and the Nephilim and everybody else, but it didn't. And if we look at other flood stories like the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Sumerian story, we see why that there was still never. So let's move into now a, a part that really tells the story of why we must learn how to break things down and get all the correct information. Let's just say you were a person or are a person who sits into the congregation and you just accept whatever the heck they tell you to accept. And they said that this covered all the earth. Let's look at God and how God talks about all things like that in the Bible, the Christian Bible, all right? So let's look at a few things. So uh, let's see, in my notes here, I looked at how Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, when he destroyed that and Lot's daughter, here's the key, Lot's daughter said, there's not a man in the earth to come into us. And this is why they had sex with their daddy, all right? In order for them to get pregnant. So we know that, now we know that not every man was killed, but it said not a man all the earth. And the word that's used here is irits, E-R-E-T-S. Go look it up in your strongs and vines and all that kind of stuff, and you'll see what irits really mean. It's translated as earth today, but that ain't what it meant. Mm -mm. Exodus 9.33, the rain was not poured upon the earth. That is suggesting that there was no rain on the entire planet during the time frame of the Exodus but there is no evidence of a worldwide drought. Where's the worldwide drought? Don't see it. Jeremiah 3, 34, 1. All the kings of the earth of his dominion and all the people fought against Jerusalem. Now, I, you know, I would think if during that time frame of Nebuchadnezzar's dominion, if there was a world war going on, the Mesoamericans would have talked about it. People in, in, in China would have talked about it. I mean, why is people in China coming, how, having a world war against Jerusalem? It, cause it, 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 and it says all the kingdoms of the earth. Because Eretz, the word E-R-E-T-S, is there, all right? All the kingdoms. You should think about that now. You literalists who believe that it will cover all. Um, <clears throat> Chronicles, Second Chronicles 36, 21. You know, Cyrus, you know, said that it is said that Cyrus encompassed all the kingdoms of the earth. So you mean Cyrus encompassed Africa, South America, North America? It says all the kingdoms of the earth, Eretz. All right, you know, uh, Acts 11, 28, so you can get some New Testament in here. Speaks of a famine throughout all the world. Wasn't a famine throughout all the world during the time of times of Acts. They wasn't experiencing the famine over here in North America. They ain't talk about that. Luke 2, 1, you know, refers to a tax decree from the Romans. Some of the, that they taxed the, the whole world. Australia didn't know anything about no tax. The Aboriginals didn't know anything about the Romans. They met the Egyptians at one point, but they didn't know anything about the Romans. You know, Luke 2, 1. Oh, that was Luke 2, 1. That was that, what that one was. Sorry, I said the wrong. But Luke 2, 1 is where you'll find that by taxing the whole world. So, I mean, this word and this idea that when the Bible speaks of all the world, in your logic mind right now, you're saying, well, we know that they just talking about the, all the world that they knew. Well, exactly. They're talking about the world that they knew because the thing about it, this word, Eretz, actually means land or country, small geographical areas. It is not to be translated as worldwide. And in that, it's 140 times it's translated as country in the Bible. 1,476 1, times it's translated as land in the Bible. So it is not the whole world. And, and when you understand that, you can then understand your story better. 
You can say Noah flood. Sure, maybe there was a flood in that area, which would explain how he the boat could because that boat can't hold everything and everybody. So God, you know, the Creator was just destroying them people, just those people right there, you know. So not everybody, because you got to understand the words, grammar. I told you in a different video about the tri uh, the trivium. Grammar is facts. Understand the facts, okay? So, like Cain, Cain was cursed and driven off, driven from the face of the earth. Did Cain go into outer space? I believe he went to a city and found a wife. So how is he driven from the face of the earth, but goes to a city and find a wife? Ask yourself these questions, people. Ask these questions. Abraham told, get thee out of thy country. The word irith is there. And unto a land, the word irith is used again, that I will show thee. That's Genesis 12, 1. You know, okay? So he left. It says irith. Ain't the whole world. It's meaning land and country. All right? So you got to understand what these words mean. And you pastors and ministers, stop teaching something that says that, well, irith meant this then and over here it meant... No, man. It always means land or country. It never means the entire planet. It is never global all right it is never global all right so you have and you need to understand that because there are other civilizations that were going on during all these times and during these times they did not experience the famine the drought the flood at the exact same time when you understand that then you can begin to develop wisdom concerning what you're reading and that goes for anything that you're reading i don't care if you're reading a book on business you need to understand the language, when it was written, what it was about, what was going on in that area, so what those words mean. We walk around today and you hear, if somebody says that, you know, you're having a good time and they say, and so, if you, if you took a person from the 1930s, brought them to today, 2017, and they see you having a merry good old time, and then and they said, wow, you guys are having a gay old time. You might be offended, because you're saying, whoa, I'm not gay. Well, I'm not acting gay. You know, a gay person would be like, yes, I am. But all they mean is that you're having a happy time. You're having a good time. Because that's what the word meant to people in the 1930s. It doesn't mean the same thing today as it meant back then. But your Christmas song says, you're putting on your gay apparel. You get it? Words, understanding the word, what the words meant then gives you an understanding of all the facts and everything around it. Now, I could go on and on and on about what these words meant, but you've got to start understanding and reading these things for yourself because then you'll discover that there are so many parts of the Bible and the Torahs and everything else that you are getting misunderstandings from because you're not under getting the right understanding of the words of so your wisdom is off and then you come on comments and you fuss and argue when really it's just you don't understand the facts so we got to understand the facts so we can move forward i hope this has blessed some of you guys y'all have a great day this is your coach coach Renz, and uh please comment comment below and if you troll me i'm gonna troll you back have a good one